Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be going on a trip to Bernard Star, one of the closest stars to our solar system, and we're going to discover a little bit about it, we're going to find out what we're actually studying about it nowadays, and we're also going to speculate a little bit about what we'll find there one day. There is Barnard Star right there, at a distance of about 6 light years away from us. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So this is technically the second closest object to our solar system, although that's assuming you count Alpha Centauri as a single object. But Alpha Centauri has three stars, there's Alpha Centauri A, Alpha Centauri B, and also uh, Proxima Centauri. Uh, I don't know if this, there, yeah, there they are. There's Proxima Centauri and there's Alpha Centauri A and B. So Bernard Star is the fourth closest star to us at a distance of about six light years away. Now here it actually doesn't look like it, but we've calculated pretty precisely and it's about six light years away. Now, um, it's actually going to approach us much closer in about um, 10,000 years, specifically uh, AD 11,800. It's going to be at a distance of about 3.7 um, light years away from our sun, which is going to be about this far. There is 3.75 and then it's actually somewhere here right now. So it's actually kind of moving toward us and it's famous because it has one of the um, one of the fastest motions across the sky. If you were ever to find Bernard's star in the skies using a telescope, because it's actually kind of hard to see because it's very dim, uh, you would see that it's moving across the skies really, really fast. Uh, usually in a single lifetime, basically in about 80 years, it can move as much as the diameter of the moon across the sky. So it's pretty well known because of this. And the first person to measure its proper motion across the skies was an astronomer from America by the name of Barnard in 1916. And that's why the star is named after him. But this name was only approved um, in February of 2017. And prior to this, this was known as a completely different object. Now we're actually going to create a, a hypothetical Barnard star system in the Universe Unbox because we want to discover what uh, is actually here? Now, first of all, this is a red dwarf. It's a red dwarf that's a lot less massive than our sun. Specifically here, it's about 14.4% the mass of the sun. It's also much, much, much smaller, only a little bit bigger than Jupiter. So it's a typical red dwarf. And here's Jupiter in comparison to the Bernard star. It's only just a little bit bigger. Um, and, and we actually thought that there was a gas giant orbiting around it a long time ago, uh, back in the 60s and early 70s. But then it was proven to be wrong and it was probably just a data mistake. So there is so far no actual planets uh, that have been discovered here. Nothing bigger than three masses of Earth at least. Uh, there might still be some terrestrial planets like Earth and possibly some other rocky planets close to it. But so far we haven't really seen any, and in 2017, specifically in um, May of 2017, the uh, Red Dot mission was began in uh, Puerto Rico uh, using one of the biggest telescopes we have to basically look for these objects that might be orbiting around Bernard Star, and it's the biggest telescope that can actually discover them right now, except of course for the Chinese telescope, but it's not ready for action yet. Uh, and how would we discover these planets? Well, one of the ways of discovering them is by essentially looking at the dims uh, in front of the star. But we haven't found any, because it's very likely that none of these planets move in front of the star. They might be moving this way, though. And there's only one way to discover um, if there's planets from this angle. And that's by looking at the star directly and seeing if it actually wobbles a little bit as it sort of moves across the sky. Now, the wobble here will be so, so tiny. You can kind of see that its velocity changes uh, by maybe a few meters per second. 
So detecting this wobble would be very, very difficult, especially from such far, far away distance. Obviously, there wouldn't be any marks like you see here, even though it looks very beautiful from this distance. So we would actually have to really carefully observe its motion across the skies to see if there's any terrestrial planets around it. And this is actually what the mission in 2017 is going to be doing. We're going to be looking for terrestrial planets around this red dwarf and also a few other ones. And ironically, or I guess unusually, a very recent announcement from Ross128, which is another similar but slightly smaller red dwarf, was made in regards to a very unusual signal. And I've talked about this signal and this announcement in one of the previous videos. So we don't really think it's aliens, but it's very unusual and very uh, strange in terms of both frequency and its repetitions. Now, this star is actually very, very old. It's even older than the sun. It's probably anywhere between 7 to possibly even 12 billion years old. And in this game, it's currently at age of 10, years, 10 billion years. Uh, so it's about double the um, age of our sun. And what you've just witnessed is actually very rare about around this planet. Or around... And what you've just witnessed, actually, and this is why I paused the game, is something that this star and many other red dwarfs are famous for. It's a flare. These flares don't really happen around Bernard's star very often, and the last one we observed was in 1998. Um, but when they do happen, they're ridiculously powerful. Such a flare, if it occurs, usually doubles the temperature of the star from about 3,000 degrees to about 7 to 8,000 degrees. And because of these flares... Uh, this is known as a flare star, and because of these flares, um, we think that if there are any planets, they're probably stripped of atmosphere and possibly even liquid water. Because these flares are so powerful, and these planets are so close to the star that they would receive 10,000 up to maybe 100,000 more radiative energy um, than our planet Earth. And even with a powerful magnetosphere, they'll probably just be stripped completely and be entirely and absolutely naked. And possibly even very hot as well. But we do think that there might be actually planets here. And mostly because uh, even though it's an old star, it, it has about 30% uh, metallicity of our own sun. Meaning that there is non-hydrogen, non-helium materials here that probably coalesced into some sort of planetary objects long, long time ago. Now, we don't know if we're going to find them anytime soon, but hopefully we'll be able to discover something so that Bernard Star is not going to be one of those red dwarfs that has no planets whatsoever. But because this star is actually so dim, as a matter of fact, if I were to place it at the same distance as our own sun, it would be like same as maybe 100 moons. So 100 times brighter than the moon. But... Um, if we were to compare this to our sun in terms of brightness, our sun has to be at a distance of 80 astronomical units away for it to be as bright as Bar Barnard's star at a distance of one astronomical unit. In other words, it's like 1600 times less bright than, um, than our sun. But it is very, very active because it's, it's a flare star. So there's a lot of these flares that usually occur on, um, inside of the star due to very, very powerful magnetic forces. But also because it's much less massive than the sun and because um, it's a little bit easier to see if you have a powerful enough telescope, um, we think that because of these uh, parameters, we'll be able to find any potential planets much, much easier. So even if there is actually um, a planet somewhere farther away here, like let's just say at a distance of like one astronomical unit, um, it will actually create enough perturbations. And we're going to demonstrate this right now by erasing these other planets. That if we look at this uh, star long enough, we'll be able to see a change in velocity. So let's see how long it takes actually. So we're going to wait a few days here for us to actually witness a slight, slight change in, in its speed. So even after two months, it hasn't really changed here, but you can kind of see, if you look at the graph, it is actually changing. It's slowly increasing. It's changing by like maybe a hundredth of a meter per second 
every few days. So we have powerful enough telescopes to, to detect these changes. And so this is, this is how we might be able to detect some kind of a planetary object that is going to be somewhere out there orbiting around Bernard Star, which we think definitely has to be there because many red dwarfs seem to have planets. And so there is no reason for Bernard Star to be an exception. Now, before we finish this video, I actually wanted to mention some of the cool projects that were supposed to occur and uh, supposed to actually take us here because this particular star was chosen a long time ago as the chances for it to have planets is pretty high. So first of all, there was a project called Daedalus and this was a kind of a spacecraft that was supposed to use nuclear um, bomb-based engines and propel itself using constant um, acceleration for many, many years, reaching something like 12% the speed of light, which would take us to the star in about 50 years. So in other words, you could definitely reach this star in one lifetime. But unfortunately, due to several reasons, including, of course, the banning of um, aerial tests uh, when it comes to nuclear weapons, in other words, you're not allowed to test nuclear bombs in the atmosphere anymore, we were not able to test these engines or even create them. So this was kind of sacked back in the 60s. There was another ambitious project that actually was supposed to create a self-replicating probe that would do the same thing and get to this particular uh, star and then basically try to find a planetary object, which we're going to place right here, and then it would try to orbit around it and while orbiting around this particular planet, they would gather materials um, and then basically replicate itself, create another copy, and then proceed to the next star. Now, this was a pretty ambitious mission um, and definitely made scientific sense, but once again, because we weren't able to test any of the nuclear engines required for this type of a probe, and because basically it was kind of... Oh, I lost my probe, it collided with the planet. Uh, because it was kind of too ambitious, we were never, never able to actually even start uh, building anything that would re be required for this mission. So Bernard Star is actually really interesting, but unfortunately we don't know much about it just yet, even though it's pretty close to us. Hopefully by the end of the year, 2017, we'll be able to discover something around it, find a planet, and maybe even name it, it something silly like this, Remangi, Remang. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but it's a planet where I lost my self-replicating probe. Anyway, that's all I wanted to mention in this video, and if you know anything else about Barnard Star that I haven't mentioned, let me know in the comments below. This explosion that was created by my self-replicating probe indicates that it was definitely a nuclear probe. There's a lot of energy that was released there. Anyway, come back tomorrow to learn something else and watch another flare as it just happened in the background there. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, subscribe if you still haven't, and as always, bye bye.